Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about people handling snakes in completely inappropriate ways, including someone who even thinks it's appropriate to juggle bull pythons for some reason. So we're going to take a look at these clips, we're going to try and make up our minds about what we think about them. I pretty much know what I'm going to think of most of them. Um, <laughs> but at the end I'm also going to show you some clips of what I consider to be great handling. So let's dive in. All right, guys, check this out. Beautiful black racer just found here in um, Florida. Uh, he's got some ugly scales, but we're just going to let him go on his way. Goodbye. That's a pretty weird thing to do if you think about it. Diving at a snake that's already been captured and put there. Seems like a good way to scare it and get it to strike, I guess. Let me know what you think in the comments. Here is the full oh! video. What the? Holy freaking crap! Oh, my gosh! Oh, my gosh! Oh my gosh! No way! Wow! Oh my gosh! Oh! It's a pine snake! Yes! Oh yes! Holy crap! Hello there! Do you have anybody else with you? Oh my freaking... Oh! That is... Well, as you can see, he just grabs the snake, yanks it around, no regard for its safety or well-being at all, and starts screaming. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, snakes can't hear it anyway. But actually, snakes can hear. They just can't hear the same range of sounds as we can. So I'm pretty sure that that snake can hear him screaming. I really don't know who the guy is particularly or how much clout he has. That's just my opinion. So at first view, that does look quite risky. I mean, the snake's trying to move its head away and she keeps, you know, trying to get it to kiss her or whatever. Um, Retics kind of vary in temperament, but that one was very plump and very well fed. So I'm not really that worried about that one. <laughs> okay. This is the best way to get a ball to just tame down and make sure you don't bite. We will. We'll juggle it. I'm going to have to do a pickup. <laughs> Oh, I stink at juggling. <laughs> oh, that was a foul. But it's not out. Can't it's not out. They're too big for me to juggle, but yeah. oh, you can do two. There you go. I I feel better with that. Are you going to save it on Facebook? Mom, yeah. you, you can do that. That is awesome. I normally would juggle, but my skills are a little down today. You gotta send that to me, though. Okay, Just a quick clip. I'll what an absolute waste of space that guy is. I mean, that's openly abusing animals in front of people. Presumably, you know, getting a bit of a kick out of showing off. It's really disappointing, and I think what probably annoys me most is that I probably don't react as much as you'd expect me to in seeing something like that. And the reason is that I've, I've seen it many, many times before with ball pythons, with reptiles, I've seen it with cats and dogs, I've seen it with all kinds of animals. There's a certain small cohort of people who get into animals and abuse them. And the question is why? We've seen in human psychology that people who look to abuse vulnerable people, for example, look to gain positions where they have power over them. And in this hobby, it seems that we keep seeing people who get power over animals and use that power to abuse them. What makes it even worse is a guy puts up an apology afterwards on his Facebook page that someone showed me. And <laughs> I mean, the apology basically, there's a there's a few things in there which, which I find quite annoying. Basically he's saying he's handling them badly to show you how not to handle them. He's just re reassuring a child or, or something completely ridiculous like that. And then he says that it's not that he was really handling them badly. The clip is being misused by activists. Now, I'm not an activist. I'm someone who advocates for being able to keep animals and reptiles in particular because they enrich our lives. But it's important to say that the activists who do want to ban reptiles, that's the kind of thing that gives them ammunition. And we wouldn't have as much trouble with them if we didn't have people constantly doing stuff like that and giving them more ammunition to go on. Ele ainda demais, mas... Vou mostrar pra vocês. 
Essa daqui é a lendária Capitão do Mato, um dos animais mais incríveis aqui, de personalidade mais incrível aqui do sertão, tá pessoal? Pra quem não conhece, o seu nome científico é Xenodon Merreme, mas é um animal muito confundido aí com a jararaca, tá? Animal aí que muito pouca gente sabe diferenciar. E hoje eu vim explicar pra vocês como diferenciar uma Capitão do Mato. So this is something that we see quite often with snake personalities. So you get a snake, tease it, make it strike, make it look dangerous when it's actually just being defensive, it's, it's frightened basically. Um, and you do that to, to get some clicks and make it good for the camera. And then you pretend that you're doing something scientific. You start explaining its natural history or whatever. I recognize that technique quite quickly because I've seen it many, many times over the years. Like I say, I'm, you know, I'm getting on a bit now. Uh, but not everyone does recognize this. So it is important for us to think about it and, you know, talk about these kind of things. I'm about to show you the most beautiful snake you've ever seen. This is the blue coral snake, and it's not hard to guess how it got that name. The belly is bright red, and this has to be one of the most strikingly colored snakes on the planet. These guys reach around six feet long, and I've seen the species many times before, although this was the first ever hatchling I've found. I assume this little guy was only about two weeks old. Usually this snake is extremely defensive and will bite absolutely anything and everything. I assume this little guy didn't get the memo yet. Being in the same family as mambas and cobras, these guys are indeed highly venomous, and there is no anti-venom for this snake. So I don't recommend trying this at home. After taking a couple quick photos and videos, I let this little guy peacefully crawl back into his habitat and disappear. What a wonderful find. So that's an interesting one. I'm kind of in two minds about that video. Um, so me, for example, in the past when I found snakes like one example I can remember off the top of my head is a copperhead. If I found a snake which was venomous but happened to be on a trail where someone was going to get hurt or it was going to get hurt and I had no equipment, I would free handle it to move it. Um, and I have done that, so I'd, I'd be open about that. But when there's no need to free handle, I don't really know where I, where I stand on that. At first I thought, you know, he's not really hurting the snake. But when you see that he kind of restrains it by the head at one moment, it does make you wonder if this person is trying to push their boundaries, if they're trying to get some kind of, you know, adrenaline rush out of it. Now, I haven't got a lot of information. It's from an Australian news outlet. Apparently that is a guy handling a juvenile eastern brown snake. That's what I've been told. And he suffered multiple bites. He didn't know what it was. He thought it was a tree snake, he said. Um, and he started to feel sick after being bitten, contacted a reptile group, and basically they saved him. They got them the medical care he needed. But I think at the time when I got that video, he was still in hospital. I think he became potentially came close to losing his life uh, there's people saying in the comments when i found that video saying oh what a what a stupid thing to do and i i mean I really i kind of feel sorry for the guy he was handling a snake he thought it was harmless he's obviously interested in snakes and he's done something dumb and ended up in a world of hurt and i think personally like thinking about myself when i was younger how many dumb things did i do i've broken about seven bones now and counting it's that horrible sinking feeling when you do something dumb like that and i do feel sorry for that guy i mean yeah he's got some skills smoking a cigarette at the same time but that's just something I really don't like, the snake shows. A lot of people do varieties of snake shows, whether it's on the internet or whatever country it may be in. It's, for me, it's all the same kind of thing. It's teasing a snake to get a reaction out of it and then saying, I just want to work with this animal or I'm just doing a demonstration or I'm just doing this to educate people. Really, the loser is always the snake. Hey, lecheros, estoy en la Amazonía y busco una con de 10 metros. Leche acuática. Parecía chiquita dormida, pero parada está enorme. Medía seis metros. So there we got another example of a big snake, an anaconda. We're told it's dangerous, so let's handle it and beat the crap out of it for, what, a video? What are we getting out of this? Other than feeling like we've dominated a, 
an animal that wouldn't actually be dangerous if you left it alone in the first place. <laughs> I just banged air. Yeah, I should have washed my hands. No idea what motivated him to do that, but you know, <laughs> that's a good lesson for the rest of us keepers. Esse foi o dia que eu carreguei uma cobra no peito lá ele e muita gente ficou na dúvida se esse animal é um animal de brinquedo, se esse animal é um animal peçonhento e se ela é de verdade, tá pessoal? Muita gente acabou não acreditando aí que esse bicho é um animal de verdade, tá? Pra quem não sabe do vídeo que eu tô falando, é um vídeo aí que acabou viralizando nas redes sociais vizinhas aí, tá pessoal? E eu vou estar tá deixando aqui um takezinho dele pra vocês. Eu entender como é que tem gente que diz que não gosta de roça porque é perigoso. Eu quero saber qual o perigo que vocês vão encontrar na roça. Na cidade sim que é perigoso, que a gente tem ladrão, tem there's another example of someone who's caught a wild snake and proceeds to walk around a bit hanging off his garments and really you've got to wonder what is going through the snake's mind we know that snakes aren't very intelligent no one would ever try and tell you that a green tree python is as smart as a monitor lizard for example that just it's not true so what we do know with snakes though is that they can perceive threat they can feel anxiety, they can feel fear, and they can feel, not emotions, but they can definitely feel a sense that they are in danger. And that is probably all that's going through that snake's head. So it doesn't have the reasoning to say, well, this human's not gonna hurt me now, you know, it's been 30 seconds or whatever and I'm still okay. It's probably just feeling fear, basically. So now we've had a look at some pretty ridiculous stuff. Let's move on to some people that I think handle snakes well. Oh yeah, nice double. Rat racer. I mean copperheads. Yeah, he's good. All right. Good stuff. Another big boy. And our first in-hand racer of the day. So that was NKF Herping. He has a big YouTube channel and I've watched his stuff on and off for years. And that was only a short bit of one of his videos, but he basically just goes up and he just picks the snakes up. He doesn't run towards them, he doesn't rush up to them, he doesn't grab them, he just gently picks them up. And the fact that, if you know racers, I mean the fact that he regularly picks up racers without getting bitten, means that he is handling them gently. And I, I have no qualms about how he handles snakes at all. So we just walked up on one of our biggest possible snake targets up here in the beautiful rainforests of Queensland. Take a look right here. Now, despite the impressive size of this lovely, lovely python, this is not a very big one. Again, that guy is obviously excited to find a snake. He's containing his excitement and he walks up to it and he picks it up gently. Sure, some snakes will try to get away and you'll have to chase them and grab them if you do need to catch them, you know, if they're in somewhere they're not supposed to be, for example, but there was no need, so he doesn't, he just picks it up. It could be that he genuinely loves reptiles. Hi, I'm Ed Crittenden. I am the animal technician and herpetologist here at the Centre of Snake Bite Research and Interventions at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Uh, so the reason we've got the snakes here is uh, we focus on sub-Saharan African uh, snake bite, which is a neglected tropical disease. Uh, it affects the most impoverished regions of the world. Our collection here, the venom that we extract from these snakes and the snakes that you've seen today will go on to uh, be used in our research. So that's immunization for new development of venom, characterization of uh, different components of the venom, and to uh, look at new treatments for snake bite. We currently have 173 snakes in the collection across 51 different species. Um, I've had a cobra head bump my leg. Um, that's the closest I've had to a bite. Um, we've not had an escape in about 15 years. We've not had a bite in about 21 years. So um, we're quite safe. So that is the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine here in the UK. I haven't picked them because they're in the UK. <laughs> it's not just, it's not just British bias. Um, but they regularly milk some of Africa's most dangerous snakes, most highly venomous snakes, and they use it to make antivenin and they use it to save lives. They're doing very good work. Risk is not in their interest. They do not want to have to tell the people that fund them or 
whoever that they've had another bite, you know, every year or so. And the fact they've gone 21 years without a bite shows that you can handle venomous snakes safely and responsibly. You can keep them safely and responsibly. They've got two people there handling the snakes when necessary. They're using equipment, they've got the visors. They have everything they need to do it safely, and they do. And I think that's a great example of handling. So there you have it. That was a very strange video. There was some really bad stuff in there. I'd love to know what you think about it. But at the end, as we saw, there's also some people out there that are herping and keeping snakes and catching snakes that genuinely love them and handle them gently and with respect. So there's hope. There's always a silver lining. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like, subscribe, and please do come back next week for more. Thank you very much.